Suddenly it's the vape pens. It's changed everything. Now we can just be high everywhere. Um, and that's great. And I, I'm not so bombed out that I can't do my job well. I yeah. can actually do my job better in many, many cases. Yeah. Open up, Colorado. It's 420. Time to grind and burn. This is not your son, Stoner Show. Welcome, 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 welcome to the Cannabis Community Project. I am Brainstorm, once again broadcasting high up from Denver, Colorado. I'm here to explore the business side of this newly emerging economy while living the lifestyle. Hey, Canopreneurs, let me take a second just to tell you about Kushley Organic Products. So Kushley has invented this very unique product that works like none other. I use it myself and many of my close friends and family use it. What it does is it eliminates odor. It doesn't mask it. It's not a perfume. It's not a cologne. It eliminates it. And it's organic and it's non-toxic. And Kushley is one of the best. www.kushley.com. Also find them on Facebook and other social media under the same name. Kushley Organic Products. Hey, how are we doing? This is Jay Griffin from Dank. Dank's located at 3835 Elm Street in Park Hill neighborhood, just east of Park Hill Golf Course. It's a really convenient location because it's just a half mile south of I-70 at the Dally Exit. Come on by and see us. What up, everybody? My name is Young Fate. I am a representative of Weird Music, and uh, I'm here to talk with CCP Cannabis Community Radio today. Um, what's up, everybody? This is T. May, female recording artist of Weird Music, and I'm here to talk to CCP as well. <laughs> well, the, well, the thing is, is when it comes to live shows, it's tricky. After I get done with these shows and I focus on Red Rocks, I try to go back and put uh, my artist, like Brandon Ray, get him a headline where he can start making money and, and doing shows. I mean, there's enough money for us to go around. Like I said, at the end of the day, as long as my bills are paid, I got food in my fridge, yeah. and my Xbox One is working fine. Yeah. <laughs> you two are a couple. Yeah. So when you make money, in a sense, she's kind of making money. When she makes money, you're, you're kind of making money. I guess your job is being a performer, right? It's your, it's your job, in and a I'm, sense. And I'm also trying to get back into the speaking days, you know, where you know, I'm not just up there on the stage rapping, but I'm also speaking and, and talking to people because as a, as a leader and as a, as a person that's in the public, I feel like that is my job. Let's have a good time. Where where do you classify yourself? So you're not a gangster rapper, right? So I'm I'm the king of weirdos. The king of weirdos. I'm the king of weirdos. Yeah, I'm the founder of weird music, and I'm the king of weirdos. I do a bunch of weird stuff. Yeah. If you if you get my parents in here, they'll tell you I was bad. And if you get my grand if you get my grandparents in here, they'll tell you I was curious. And then you get my exes and my baby mom in here, they'll tell you I was naive. And then you get around weird music in my twenties, they'll tell you I went hard. Like I went party. I even uh even overdosed like in <laughs> New Year's. That's what got my life straight too and made me really what? focus. Yeah, it was it's been crazy. This, this New year. Year's, yeah, this overdosed year. on what? Uh, I would not like to say. Come on, man, let's get off social media. Let's let's really get back into the streets. Let's get back into the community. Let's let's like I don't even how many artists that are successful. Like then this is a question for those that are listening. How many of you guys have even had a conversation with your fans outside of listen to my link? Here's my link. You probably get all the time. Here's my link. Listen to my link. But how many times do you like, hey, how are you doing? Do you realize how many how many of my fans I blow away with that? I won't send them any music, no videos, nothing. I just message them, hey, how was your day? They'll be like, oh my gosh, I can't believe you asked how my day was. My day's fine. How was your day? My day's yeah. good. Well, you have a great day. I'm glad that you're doing good. I won't even send them a link until like two weeks later. And why? Is because they're more acceptable to listen. Right. Because I care, if you care about them, most people are going to care about you back. But, um, yeah, we appreciate you bringing us in and stuff. And for those who don't know where to find me, you can Google T. May of Weird Music and I'll pop up. Or you can Google Colorado's Favorite Musician and look under those images and I'll pop up too. Nice. <laughs> yeah. And we got a free mixtape too. I, I think I got the mixtape, right? It was the audio map. Yeah, you were sending out? Yeah.
Hey, Canapreneurs. Are you inspired by the stories you hear? Maybe it's time for you to tell your own story. Do it right here on this show, CannabisCommunityProject.com, or email me personally, brainstorm at CannabisCommunityProject.com. Hey, Canapreneurs. This week's show is sponsored by Dairy Berry's Recording Studio. Feeling guilty about a time with cannabis? Get it off your chest and confess it on Canafessions, your public forum to absolve your soul. New voice message, Wednesday, 4, 21 p.m. Hi, my name is Bob, and this is my Canafession. I was on a family uh, vacation with my parents to Egypt. And I snuck away and uh, hung out with the Bedouins for a while and smoked hashish out of their hookah and had some fun. They were pretty mad when I uh, found out they didn't get a go. So, sorry, Mom. Sorry, Dad. And that was Canafessions. If you have a confession to make, contact me via Facebook or the website at CannabisCommunityProject.com. <laughs> Community, I have some news for you. I am fired up today. I got a couple things I want to tell you about that happened this last week. And I think it's pretty important because it's bound to happen to more people and it's already happened to so many. I want to tell you about what Chase Bank is doing with me. Now, just to give you a quick backstory, everybody knows that if you're a quote unquote marijuana business, you can't have a bank account because it's federal this and that and they don't want to be involved or take the risk. All this nonsense because you're handling a quote unquote illegal product product or substance federally. Now, with that in mind, let's get to my story. So I'm a media company. I grow no plants. I sell no plants. I have no patients. I don't do anything that is actual marijuana plant related. I'm a media show. I'm a podcast. I talk about it and nothing else. And I mean, despite my association with, I personally am not a marijuana business. So last year, I opened a business checking account with Chase Bank and I described to them, the nature of my business. That was a media company. I did podcasting and I told them the name Cannabis Community Project LLC. That's how I have it registered with the state. They allowed me to do it. They thought it was fine. There was no issues there. So I'm banking with Chase nine months to a year or so. Small deposits, small transactions, nothing big. And the transactions are just sponsors depositing money for sponsorship. And then, uh, of course, a few product sales to the store. But all of our products, for those of you that know, are non-marijuana products. We have Kushley, which is just the odor eliminating spray. We got some t-shirts that we're selling. We got the herb boxes, which is literally a box. And, uh, you know, that's about it for the most part. So this is what we're doing. And then I go to make a deposit the other day and I'm informed by the banker that my account is set up for closure within 10 days. Letters being sent out, the account's going to be closed and I'm no longer going to have access, not to just this account, they're banning me from the entire Chase system. I cannot open any accounts under any name. When I ask for a reason why, well, here's the runaround, right? So in the bank, in the location. When I asked the banker why it was closing, she looked at the screen and said, well, it's because we don't do any association with marijuana businesses. And I asked her, I said, how am I a marijuana business? She said, well, your name is Cannabis, Cannabis Community Project. I said, yes, but how are you determining that I'm a marijuana business based on that? In my business description, when I set up the account, it was clearly stated as a media company. You went to my website, you looked me up on the Secretary of State, you saw how I was registered, you knew my operations were purely media. Why am I being closed? And her response was very little, but that's all she knew. So then I, of course, call my lawyer, my lawyer, David Law. Oh, man, David Law. A firecracker coming out of a rattlesnake's mouth. He was so pissed about what they were doing based on this same idea that I'm not a marijuana business. I just have the title cannabis in my name. 
And his analogy was, do they also close the bank accounts of the rape crisis center because they use the word rape in their title and that's an illegal crime? They are simply saying based on the name, a word, they are going to discriminate against me. Well, David thinks that sounds like a violation of my First Amendment rights. Whatever the reason is, we're going to make them talk or we're going to file a federal lawsuit and we're going to take them to court. Here in Colorado, we don't stand for this because we're a different people here. We're people that stood up and we voted in Amendment 64. We're people that said we want this in our state legally. We're people that said we want it regulated like alcohol. So join me on this journey of litigation, folks. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. We are on side. Coming out of Oceanside, California, IA. Bring you good times. Left my side, I button my two lips. Cool, calm, collected. She's a girl I have selected. Pull her out a holster when I wanna see her naked. Wouldn't shoot no blanks. These are real explosions. Wouldn't tell no lies. These are real emotions. She's headed for the door. I got no power to stop her. There's a pistol by my side, cause I think I just lost her. When I lost my woman, I picked up a weapon. they would customize it and we would have this cool in-store advertising it would be like our specials you know as you're walking down the hall there was some content related stuff that could be cool with that but it was just so expensive i said look you know i can get pandora with a lot better songs for only this much and they can't even come close it's kind of a reach also to say in the 20 seconds they're walking down the hallway that <laughs> some ads would grab them <laughs> we gave it a shot one day we tried to listen to their station and i mean it lasted less than 15 minutes and we started paging through all the songs that they were playing and we we're like we didn't even know very many of them and i guess they just don't have the rights you know to that kind of it's a big issue right so that's why um content every time i run into somebody who says they're a musician i'm like hey man give me music give me music it's hard oh, finding music for to play yeah. on there huh yeah, because I... Like I even just background music? Anything. If I don't have rights to it, YouTube flags it and takes it off, and then all the other services flag it and take it off. Then you're left with, like, generic Muzak type stuff. So if you want, like, good music, you need to just reach out to somebody directly. And that's somebody says, like, yeah, I'm in a band. I'm like, send me stuff. I will play it on the show repeatedly. <sighs> I, I don't know. I've listened to a few podcasts where they're just playing like mainstream stuff. It's like they got to be paying a lot of money for this, but what's to, the point? Do it. I yeah. mean, it's being played on every other radio station in town. What's the point in paying an extremely high fee for a, a song that every other radio station is playing simultaneously? Right, but it's catchy. People know the song and they're like, oh, <laughs> if they're not listening, at least they're humming and song. <laughs> you could have a dank band. 
House band. Oh, tell me about it. We do this it's called the Dank All Stars. Those that's the um, Greg Gamut, <laughs> Justin Jones. You know, they're both over were over three hundred pounds, so they, they called themselves the Heavy Heavies for a while. Jones plays sax and Gamut plays percussion, and they've always been in bands out here. They started the Dank All Stars, and that's when they've been sponsoring all those. Um, when we got into sponsoring the events at Park House, and uh, so that they could really just play Park House sold. Oh really? Yeah, and they sold it to the guy. Oh, is that why you got the stuff you're rummaging through the yeah. the yard sale? Speakers, all these speakers came from Park House. Yeah, <laughs> it's a sweet system. People take music pretty seriously, so like we got caught wind of people thumb downing songs on Pandora and stuff and negatively rating them. That wasn't fair because. And then that person never gets to hear their music again. Well, I've always liked the idea of if you had a, a spot, you know, an audience where hundreds of people a day are coming through, then that's like the chance to like curate your own bands and stuff and kind of be like, we have an audience, let's find some good bands and kind of... Yeah, we can make a whole day of it, huh? Right, like bring, Let's bring see how them. how much material they have, but yeah, yeah, just kind of bring them in a little bit to an audience. It's like the the part time I job I do. It they have all these franchises where they stream the same music through all the stores and they pay for it. And I'm thinking, no, they should do the reverse because they People have thousands of stores. Them. They should be taking bands and you know introducing them through those thousands of store network instead of paying for somebody else's <laughs> crappy '70s you know music that they're paying yeah. royalties on they should use that as you know hey we have thousands of stores let's let's take a you know a band every month and that, that you know totally introduce cool. them and break them but well and those bands would love that opportunity they right? might even pay for that opportunity to get in there like that but what i noticed with this whole switch to this new system apparently my staff thinks the the music's for them <laughs> oh, okay but you know it is on on one side of the wall it is but on the other side it's for the customers and and whatnot so right. you know there's some of the music I had to tell him, I was like, look, you guys all pick three stations that you like, but you can always come back to me and say, you know, it didn't work out. Like, I shouldn't have chose yeah. Michael Jackson or, <laughs> you know. Hey, some good music. I mean, we're hearing, like, yeah. Jane's Addiction, like, every ten songs or something, you know. Yeah. Before noon, yeah. that's yeah. just unacceptable. Just, <laughs> it's been fun because yeah. you get to hear other people's music. Like, I put on MC Yogi was one of mine, and so I'm sure nobody's ever heard of that. Well, then maybe, like, a store DJ, right? Like for the day, <laughs> like a, awesome. a daily DJ for the day, uh, the person who's responsible for that day's lineup. <laughs> <laughs> you know, what musical if, lineup. What if you did have that live feed into the hallway, and so when you you could sit here and you could see people coming in, and then you could start talking about their red shirt as they're walking down the hallway. Comment on people as they're walking down the hallway. We could do a whole show of uh, <laughs> hey, that's you, you, you're going the shopping today. Yeah. <laughs> hey, speaking of music, we should talk about your event tomorrow. Kind of the main sponsor, right? <laughs> tomorrow there is a yoga fo- yoga photo shoot here yoga um, photo that shoot? Uh, uh, we have a little bit. To to do with mainly just because we're donating the space so twisted sister is going to be here with the photo whole photo crew and so we're doing this class like most of the day and she's getting a bunch of good footage and getting interviewed by some magazines so they're coming in with their to promote their the crew yoga. to promote the yoga class but also uh, primarily you know continue to gain interest for the twisted sister yoga retreat sponsored by dank and um Right now, it's been it's been really picking up a lot of momentum. The Twisted Sister Yoga is um, now working with Women Grow, and last night at the Women Grow event, yeah. there was 150 or 100 people, uh, probably 100 people. Where, where were they at? Jane. They were at the Jane headquarters down by um, down by the Meadowlark and the Larimer Lounge. Uh, they're at 27th and Larimer. So Jane has an office there, and they clear it out. And then so they had about four different speakers, and Shelly started off with a five-minute meditation to get the whole thing started and nice. kind of calm everybody, everybody down, down, everybody seated and stuff. Um, so, yeah, we're sponsoring that, and that's uh, 50 – it's up to 50 people now. Okay. Uh, it's going to be a really cool event this summer in June. we still got a little ways. but So she's picking up more sponsors right now, GH Labs with K-Puff, uh, Dank, um, Sweetgrass has some action. Um, we're all kind of co-sponsoring right now. So uh, as far as tomorrow, tomorrow at 10 a.m., uh, Cervantes is releasing tickets for the Leftover Salmon Show. Maybe that's what you heard of. Yes. Yes. It is going to be incredible. Uh, we are um, proud to bring um, 
Leftover Salmon to Ophelia's Electric Lounge. Where is that? I don't think I'm familiar with that place. I'm going to say it's near um, Market and um, 20th. Okay. uh, Right in there. And it's a refurbished brothel. used to be a brothel. So when you go in there, there's uh, all these uh, sexy pictures from the 40s and 30s that are, you know, you know that style. Plus size women and over draped drowns showing their ankles. (laughs) There's a lot of skin. There's a lot of skin shown on these particular ones. And you can see how it's still set up like a brothel there's like uh, multiple layers levels and when you walk in you come upon the dining room but there's a hole in the middle and you look down on the stage and the the basement level which is where the party goes down so there's vip tickets available so you can see down from all three levels because of the opening in the middle yeah and then it's uh actually i guess two levels so just the the two. Um, so if you remember the old Soapy Smiths, Soapy Smiths. Yeah, I was down on 14th no. at Larimer. Soapy no. Smiths had three levels there and leftover. I remember seeing leftover salmon there back in uh, 95 so uh, or 96. So this is going to be uh, a great time. They're actually having a concert this summer at Red Rocks that they were trying to cross-promote. Um, but tomorrow we're going to make available – Tickets just for the Ophelia show. Okay. Um, and from which website? It's going to be on Cervantes' website. Okay, directly sold from from their website. Yeah, they have a ticket outlet. You know, whatever their ticket outlet yeah. resource is. How many uh, how many musical events are you are you planning this year to be involved in? Whether direct sponsorship or some some type of involvement. Well, it would be difficult to say this year. Last year we were certainly involved in a lot more because uh, we had um, sponsored weekly – I mean, uh, yeah, weekly events at the Park House. Okay. And so that was quite a bit of music for us. We're going to dial that back certainly. So I would look forward to something in the neighborhood of once a month somewhere once we get that figured out. Now, it could be at the DCG event space that's being constructed right now. Um, but it could be at any other venue as well. Where, where does this fit for you? Is this uh, marketing, promotion? What's the direct correlation to the business? How do you see it supporting, I guess, increased revenues or just the brand? Yeah, th- that is a good point. Like It's mainly a brand recognition thing. Yeah. And when you look around out there, there's companies getting involved in all kinds of different organizations and getting their name out there in different ways. We've always been tied to the music industry. As I mentioned, uh, a couple of the partners were uh, in, have been in bands for a long time and in fact justin jones one of the founding partners uh, went to school for music so if it's not uh, playing music then we're doing events to kind of structure it around music nice yeah it kind of just adds to the overall environment lifestyle culture of what you got going on here music is good everybody loves music and you include food in that equation and you'll have the two two power and I, yeah i think because of that the because of their involvement in all these bands uh, they've have tight relationships with the different venues around town right. Cervantes and Scott Morrill and Jay Bianchi at uh, Coyotes and, wow. and you know places that they've always played and so whenever those people are promoting big events for 420 we quickly get asked to get involved in those so that tends to be where our marketing budget uh, is spent although we are in so many print ad medias and right. online advertising now Speaking of places and events, what's the update on the remodel of the new lease? Is it a warehouse, an office space? What are we calling it? Yeah, we have actually a split area. It's a DCG offices are going to be there, and then there'll be an event hall. And this event hall will be multifunctional. It's going to host everything from uh, networking events to vendor-related expos. Is it going to um, have a name like Danker or Dank 2? Or- <laughs> well, we want to separate. We got to separate it from Dank. Okay. And in order to maintain a little bit of incognito, uh, separate, um, uh, we have to separate it from Dank. And, and the so operations. Of yeah. The two businesses you can't have different. any uh, smoking of uh, ingestion of cannabis in or around the premises okay. from a dispensary. So around the premises is what it says in the regulations. So, so it has to be its own so, entity. Yeah. Mm-hmm. How far are we? Well, at this point, we're like 50 yards from Dank. So that, that's, uh, you know, it's separated. But technically on a different street, different right? Different street, different address. Two names. Yeah. Different. And it's, 
going to be a pretty sweet space. It's 2,500 square feet, so it's going to hold in the neighborhood of 200 people. Uh, it's going to be great for a variety of things. We're going to be teaching classes in there primarily. We'll have class uh, in there once a month. We're going to do an, an orientation series, a six-hour class that's going to be each facility type will get two hours. So what type of class? It'll be a, a orientation training for facility types, cultivation, processor, and dispensary. So what you're doing now currently in the other facility, you're just going to move it over to the new facility. Yeah, exactly. Okay. And, and it'll be it'll allow us to get those classes a little bit bigger, a little bit better space. We'll be relocating at least some of the yoga classes over there that we currently offer at Dank. Uh, those classes then will uh, be more cannabis friendly because they are off premises and so we will have a smoking lounge out back um to uh to allow that okay um so you know, still not inside the facility, but right. just out back. Yeah, and there's still some restrictions, of course, uh, legally, um, a Clean Indoor Air Act and things like that. So we're going to um, you know, make sure that we're doing things as legal as we can there to make sure that it is a success. Yeah. Um, but we're currently in the remodel process, and we've been hanging lights and drywall all week this week. And so we're talking about painting and carpet and probably the next couple weeks and so I would say we're going to be moving in there for the DCG offices in the neighborhood of about three weeks now uh, we had originally tried to push to be open for 420 and have an event there um, like like uh, Ananda's bongs and gongs. Have you heard of this? <laughs> I think I did briefly see something on Sounds Facebook super fun. Maybe, yeah. We're just not quite ready there. The bathrooms, uh, in order to have the event space, a primary um, limiting factor is the number of bathrooms you have available for that space. You know, So, so you what's a- the code, city code require for 200 plus person? capability you need how many bathrooms well, once it's over 166 people it's two uh, bathrooms for female and two for men all well, the different ratios actually so that's a lot for a 2500 square foot facility <laughs> yeah so. yeah and so we currently are a little short on that so what we're going to do is uh, we're going to cater to these smaller events initially and make available outdoor additional bathrooms which will be uh, on the outdoor space and you know, smoking lounge uh, and there's there's different levels of porta potties, I guess, and so we'll make sure to get some nice ones. But the Royale, uh, you know, I think what we've got to kind of go into it that that level so that uh, we're watching our spending up front, make sure that uh, uh, we are, we are providing things safely and uh, to code, and it's going to be a nice facility. It's going to be well lit, and we'll have a stage and plenty of seating. Um, so. There are uh, tend to be a, a lot of need for that. It seems like I was at the Women Grow event last night, and you know every presenter was talking about needing funds and needing a space to do different events. So and that was 150 excited. people you said there. How did that the, feel as far as the density of, of the group? Yeah, I think last night was around 100 people, but I have been there and have counted anywhere to 130 and and. It, we're twice the size of that facility there, and that's actually Jane's office. It's a pretty cool office. It's a um, you know, urban hip place on the top floor and has a patio, a rooftop patio. Um, but in order to accommodate the Women Grill event, Jane clears out the whole office with their desks and everything. So uh, I'm sure it's like they probably enjoy having having people there, but at the same time it's uh, – um, yeah. Well, well, two hundred. It's enough to have intimate settings. You can bring in, uh, you know, still different types of acts and events and speakers and and things. I mean, two hundred's a good crowd. It's mm-hmm. not. It's not nothing to spit at. No. Yeah, that <laughs> tends to be a, a great size. I've throughout my career in landscape architecture, I was always involved in USGBC and the ASLA. Those are. Uh, professional organizations and and those events were only drawing 50 people probably yeah. so to have the women grow event being so successful and popular um you know that's that's they're getting after it you know yeah. and, and and you know just like most of those spaces and the organizations they're looking for donated space 
Um, and we're going to be able to provide that. And, you know, we want to also be able to lease it out to a couple events a month to, to uh, higher end events that are going to be a little more formal. Of course, they all have to be private events and they have to have tickets sold online, um, even if they are free. That way it makes it a private event. Yeah, that's, um, I have something to show you when we're done here. I've been, it's kind of cool working on private events and access codes. Huh. Remind me before we leave. Here. Yeah, I want to see that. Uh, a quick update on anything here at Dank. Is there any uh, pricing, new products, or anything that for this week or so people should know about? Yeah, this is the beginning of our April month, and this is uh, the time where spring breakers and uh, travelers alike are starting coming out to Colorado. The weather's amazing out here right now. And, Tax season, people and, using their refunds to travel. <laughs> <laughs> so we start, we really uh, cater to the travelers in April, and we offer specials the entire month. Yeah. So uh, since we're just getting into April, that kicks off the bud of the month, which is Island Sweet Skunk. Island Sweet Skunk is a uh, very resinous, sticky bud on the sativa side that uh, that uh, really offers some head and shoulder relief at the same time. I kind of nice. noticed that coming on. Um, this so, is new to the store or new to the grow? Or? Well, we just kind of mix it up each month and try to feature a different strain, give a little bit more information on that. And then uh, Culture did a featured article on it this month and so there's a feature article on this on the strain and uh, and so we offer that all month when it's on the shelf for 30 percent off nice and so that gives people a chance to try that and then uh, all of april kick off the 420 party pack so for 65 bucks you get an eighth joint an edible and a few items of dank swag a lighter shot glass and a mug so uh yeah that seems to be really popular for 420 weekend so we pre-pack a bunch of those and just kind of have them ready um 420 week we'll have lines down the hallway here so um a lot of people are walking out with those party packs it's (laughs) it's funny because other times of the year the exact party pack will not sell at all so i don't know what it is something about just that weekend people looking it's a little variety yeah just to grab something and go yeah you get a little bit of everything um, but, uh, you know, 420 week is also very busy here. Um, so we have to also cater to our locals. And so of course, medical side is, uh, always available to the Colorado locals, no waiting in there virtually, uh, the entire time. Um, but we do have some recreational side shoppers that are locals and we give our, all of our locals a 15% discount if they're in the three, three surrounding zip codes. Oh yeah. Um, so we'll make a little express lane for those guys. Uh, and folks, when they come in, when it's really busy, <laughs> there'll be a line down the hall. But if uh, you're just coming in for a couple pre-rolls then uh, we want you to get in and out as fast as you can yeah and you always have great pricing on concentrates shatter you, at least once a week i, I walk away with some uh, shatter just because it's gr- has a great price on it and uh <laughs> yeah you're right it's good to know like even uh if you looked online like i always encourage people to look at our current menus on weed maps or leafly because that links directly with our point of sale yeah but one thing that that doesn't always show is all the specials um, because uh, they give us an ability to list only a certain number of specials on there. Um, but in the store, we always have in-store specials. We have a buy one, get one half off on each level most of the time. Um, we'll oftentimes have a $35 eighth out the door. Um, that's $28 and change for an eighth. And that's a real boom and special. And we have coupons out there in all the major magazines. So uh, you can get coupons uh, in Dope Magazine and Culture and Marquee and The Chronicle. So we're out there, and I want to make sure that everybody knows there's yeah. there's ways to save some money in here. And, and you also have a locals, or not a locals card, but a rewards card. So buy 10 of a pre-roll, you get one free. Buy 10 of eights, you get one free. Buy 10 concentrates, you get one free. So nice. um, that's a pretty popular um, uh, rewards card. And we also have the Chime system. Have you heard of this? It's like I a don't. I use the digital. punch card, but I don't. It's yeah. a digital rewards system. What am I missing out on? It's pretty cool because. How come the bartenders don't tell me about it when I'm 
checking out. <laughs> it's a cool system. They have uh, ways where we can load a number of different specials depending on how many points you've accumulated. Okay. So as you're accumulating points, when you get 50 points, well, you might be offered at that time a T-shirt. But you can see here that once I get 100 points, then I'm going to get a free eighth. Or Are something. these being you know, accumulated – Every time I make a transaction, you have to you have to punch in your code. You have to register uh, okay. that you've been here. Okay, so it's like a casino card type thing. You have yeah. to put the card in to get the rewards. Yeah. Okay. okay. And so at this point, uh, you know, they're really just like a lot of these uh, startups. You know, really trying to get going and yeah. off the ground. And we're one of their beta testers. And so I don't know. We're getting the email address from you. That way, we can um, send you on our newsletter program and. Get your phone number if you want to get some texting that tells you what different specials are. So, uh, again, finding out the specials, and I'm I'm sure uh, you're going to be able to save some money down here. But that said, we are also coming off of two record-breaking harvests down here. You mean record-breaking by yield? Yeah, we had record-breaking harvest by yield and in quality. And so it's just been an exciting time down here. So Um, so that means uh, seven uh, of the nine strains that we harvested on on this one particular harvest were over 20%, five of which were over 25% in potency. Bruce Banner topped off at 29.8. That's the highest testing uh, potency we've ever seen here at Bank. Didn't yet break break 30, but uh, we had a number of strains that were 28, 29, the Death Star. Did you actually knock the Jay's Miracle Grow over uh, (laughs) this month? We've been been, um, really lucky to have Jeremy Krause back here in in the grow and he's uh, been refining all the operating procedures and the nutrient mixes uh, through the period of the last six months and uh, really refining that and making everything uh, better back there um, as a whole. And so we're, we're happy to have him um, then uh, fast forward to uh, the snowstorm of, 2016 right so we were without power we were virtually shut down for 30 hours wow yeah so it was a pretty scary time for us we had to act quickly and did you uh, ski in snowshoe in i mean i i i I drove my truck in here it was no (laughs) problem but uh uh, certainly some people had problems getting in to work. I had one guy that was in his car for seven hours before oh. he finally made it back home on a, one giant loop. Wow. Um, but we were having cars getting stuck out here in the front uh, drive and everything. Of course, our our commitment is to open for our medical customers yeah. at least once a day at some point. So, so those that are in need or have the ability to come in for medicine and – and so that commitment uh, is what drives us uh, to open. But you know what? We also have to have uh, feet here every day. We have to have people in the grow. We have to have uh, – You got living stuff here. Yeah, the There's plants don't care. Those here. are going to keep going. So when we were at Thought Power, uh, thankfully we had a lot of strong standard operating procedures in place. Um, we had to uh, definitely run to Home Depot a few times during that storm. So thankfully they were open. Um, we had two generators going. Going. We have to, you know, of course, the first thing you have to do is get lights. Uh, well, uh, let's take a uh, step back. First thing you got to do is get your DVR up and running. Um, For the camera? Yeah, so that you're recording information. You got all your cameras on. So you can't even do anything in the grow until that is up and going. So um, then our second area of attack would be the veg. So you want to get the lights going in your veg room so that it doesn't go dark and force all those plants into flowering, right? Which can happen quickly. Yeah, pretty quickly. Very quickly. Yeah, yeah okay. And so we light the veg, and then the, your flowering blocks, well, those can remain dark. It'd be like a dark or cloudy day that uh, you know they might experience in, the, in, in nature. So uh, they can take a little bit of How uh, long did it take off to get up where the first customer could come in and purchase? Within hours? or No, we, we couldn't quite open uh, first thing in the morning um, because so once our DVR is up and going, then basically uh, we have one register that we have open. And we opened uh, instead of at uh, 10 o'clock on the medical side, we were open by 11. And I think we closed at 3 that day. Um, 
So we were able to help some folks out, and, and we have a pretty fun special on snow days. Uh, we have three different increments of snow depth that uh, your savings increase exponentially uh, with inch. every inch. <laughs> so, um, of course, this special was made uh, during dry times, and you know you never really think it's going to snow like that. And so, uh, yeah, by the end of the day, people were getting $25 eighths down wow. here. So. <laughs> uh, this is where uh, carrier pigeons really comes in, right? Get people their, their medicine from the rooftop. Well, it's fun to see those people that on those days because people are getting out. And when you do travel on days like that, like you're being careful, but it's almost like your responsibility to stop and help somebody at least once. Well, you know, uh, there's April 15th tax day coming up. So you got to have some type of promotion there, right? You got to have like a, we pay your taxes on this day while you pay your taxes or something. Or maybe like one of those drop boxes where people can uh, drop their taxes before midnight and then if they if they drop it here at Dank or something, they get a discount. I'm going to need you on my promotions team. You always have great ideas with different specials like that. Uh, I try not to do uh, too much before 420. There's just so much going on with, with that already. So. so is that pretty much April? We have the event that was being planned that's going to be moved back a little bit. The remodeling is being worked on. We have – what else was this month? Uh, you, you have the show on the – what was the uh, yeah, Ophelia's show is going to be actually on 420. So on the 20, okay. Uh, yeah. And tickets tomorrow going on sale. Yeah, that's a big deal. So there's only a limited number of tickets available tomorrow. So those go on sale at 10. Um, by 420 on a Saturday night, there'll probably be st- still some tickets available. Okay. Uh, so I hope you can help the, get the word out there because it is going to sell out and it's just going to be epic. I mean, it's, it's one of these uh, venues that uh, when you go to, you just feel like um, uh, special about it and you, and you don't care what you just spent. Nice. <laughs> and what was the name of the strain that you have this week that you're promoting? Island Sweet Skunk. Island Sweet Skunk. And that's the, the new strain in store that you're trying out. Very good. Oh, yeah. And also uh, all of the month of uh, April, of course, all our vendors want want to promote their products the entire month and all the time. So we're teaming up with a number of different vendors this month. Look for specials by Dixie, which is uh, by a... Uh, get an elixir, then you're going to get a joint for 420. We're doing a promotion with Sweetgrass. That is two, or that is a, sorry, we're doing a special with Sweetgrass. That's a three for two special. Three. So buy two, get one free. Okay. Um, that's all month long too. And uh, also we got specials out there with Open. So there's uh, coupons, and we're actually going to start uh, sponsoring the wristbands down at Cervantes so that there's a coupon on your ID bracelet ah. and um, get a cartridge, uh, buy a cartridge, get a battery for free. Nice. I use O-Pens every now and then. But uh, very good. Well, thank you for the update, and uh, we'll do it again like for next month's update. We'll do, uh, try, to, try to do it at least every other week, get, kind of sit down, do maybe a little bit shorter this time. Yeah, and, we had a lot to do, catch up on. Do like a uh, something like that. Okay. Yeah. Sounds good. Yeah. It's all, all right. Good. I appreciate it. Yeah. Appreciate you. That's all I got for you this week, entrepreneurs. Thank you for listening in, and thank you to everybody that's been supporting this community over the years. Keep following us after the show on all the social media. Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, Mass Roots. We're out there. You can find us just about anywhere, even YouTube. So make sure to come back next week and join us for another show where we'll be discussing more topics, interviewing more guests. And this is getting bigger because of you. We'll see you next week. Come on.